Hey, good morning again. I wanted to, after making that cutscene player video, just show you real quick how my event bus works. Uh, basically, it's a script with a bunch of signals. It has nothing else. We make it an auto load. You can see it's right there. Uh, then we can call these signals from anywhere in the project, and we can also connect to those signals. And so I'll show you in the cutscene player, we emit a dialogue request with the dialogue data based on that dialogue ID. Okay, so we're sending out the dialogue with, along with that request. If we can start that dialogue box, then um, the dialogue box is going to receive that. All right, we see here because we're connected to it. And now I'm gonna um, go to that function. And then we're just adding the text, right? We're starting that text box um, if it's available. So that's an easy way to handle dialogue without knowing if the dialogue box exists. I think I do have to still check if the dialogue box exists down here because we need to check if the dialogue ends. Uh, I could probably optimize that a little bit, but the point is you can see how I'm using these events to um, decouple everything. And here we're doing another dialogue request when we do the key item get. And here we're manually closing that dialog box because it's based on the timer. And so we're waiting until that, that little key item get jingle plays and is finished. And that's when we emit our signal um, that we want that dialog to close. And then we proceed with the function. Uh, let's see, where else am I using events.init? Let's, uh, we use it here in battle to tell everywhere in the game that the battle started. We use that in some places. Um, it's, it's helpful because we don't need a reference to battle. All we need to do is connect to the event bus, right? So again, it's all about decoupling, um, you know, making your code a lot cleaner. We use it sometimes in MPC, right? When we initiate a dialogue. And let's see what else. Full screen GUI enabled. Yeah, like we use it sometimes with the menus. We let the, the game know that we have enabled a, a GUI. Uh, we have an enemy encountered signal that we use in, in sometimes. Looks like I have this doubled up. That's just a hot fix. Don't worry about that. Uh, but the point is, if you find that your events need to be used uh, throughout your game and not just within that particular scene tree, uh, this is a really handy way to to manage it. And and that's all it does, really. I mean, there's nothing else to it. Uh, if you're in Godot 4, the, the formatting might be different. I'm not actually sure. And one last thing, I do ignore all of the warnings for unused signals because events never actually emits the signals itself. We're always calling it from somewhere else. Um, so that's just a little fix I did to ignore those warnings. And yeah, if you have any questions about the event bus, let me know. Uh, there's probably, in the documentation, you can probably find more information about uh, this kind of pattern. But yeah, let me know, hopefully that helps. Um, any videos that I post from now on, including this one and the, the cutscene player, there's gonna be um, things that I made off video. And so if I ever miss something and you know I, I don't explain how I got to there, right? Uh, you know, feel free to let me know. Um, you know, like something like this, for example, where I'm using it in the cutscene player, but I never really explain um, you know, how I made that system. So yeah, as always, good luck making your game and um, yeah, reach out if you need anything. All right, I'll see you next time.